The slot loading iMac G3. I've always been a fan of the all-in-one Macintosh computers, probably stemming from the fact that I grew up with one, the Macintosh SE. Even today I'm still rocking an iMac and by the looks of things over at Apple, I most likely will be using them for decades into the future. The reason I'm showing you this iMac is because it's such an awesome OS 8 and 9 gaming machine. The prices on these original iMacs are now at what I think is the lowest they'll possibly ever be. If you're a collector, now's the time to pick one of these up. I picked this one up at a thrift store for a mere $7. And even though I live in a fairly small city, browsing my local Craigslist often turns up a few people trying to get rid of them, most $10 to $20. As time goes by, these computers will probably suffer the fate of beige era Macs, and prices will jump. These Macs will run most everything from the late pre-OS X era at full speed, from excellent commercial games, to great emulators, and to most all shareware classics, including one of my personal favorites, Reckless Driving. While Reckless Driving does run, for the most part, functional on today's Macs, it's certainly not the preferred way to run this game, in my opinion. I use this iMac G3 and OS 9 because it runs that game perfectly and has those extra screen options that are absent from the OS 10 version. My first memories of Reckless Driving involved my old Power Mac 6500 that I named Gruz. Around 2001, I ran across Reckless Driving while looking for games to play. I didn't actually own very many games at the time, I just moved out of my parents' house and had to sell off all my consoles and games just to get by. Needless to say, I played a lot of shareware and freeware games, and Reckless Driving was one that I just couldn't get enough of. I can't say that my Power Mac 6500 was really all that powerful, especially the way I treated that computer. I did eventually invest in a Voodoo 3 3000 graphics card and a Sonic Crescendo L2 G3 upgrade card which really took my gaming to the next level. No longer was I bound to playing games in crappy video modes, software rendering and the like. If Steve Jobs saw this, he'd kick my ass! Reckless Driving was released in 2000 by Jonas Esterhoff as a sequel to his 1996 Macintosh shareware game Burning Rubber. <laughs> The concept of reckless driving is pretty much the same as burning rubber. Get from A to B and cause as much chaos as possible along the way. Reckless driving takes burning rubber a step further, introducing many new elements into the gameplay on top of an all new graphics engine written from scratch by Jonas. One of the new features in the game are items, which are acquired by driving into crates. There's a total of six items you can pick up from crates, but only two real weapons. The weapons are mines and rockets. The mines are probably the most useful weapon in the game as you'll be able to easily take out the ruthless police in this game. And when I say ruthless, I mean it. These cops are great at maneuvering and will kill themselves or other innocent people just to see you dead. The rockets, in my opinion, are more for getting score. They can come in handy if the police happen to flip you around, but I wouldn't rely on it to successfully take them out. The other items in the game include the police jammer, a quick way to get the cops off your ass. It can really come in handy when you're on your last life. The spikes. These things let you awkwardly pull up and destroy other cars on the road that are beside you. You can get good score from taking out the semis. The turbo engine. The turbo engine is more of a curse than a reward, especially in the later levels when you really can't drive very fast. You're almost guaranteed to crash using this thing. Normally when you crash, you lose all the power-ups you've collected. That is, unless you've got one of these things. Add-ons locked. They'll let you keep your goods after you crash. Now, like burning rubber, reckless driving has a total of 10 levels with what, in my opinion, are a mixed match of difficulties. 
There was a level editor released for the OS 8 and 9 versions of this game, but I've only briefly played around with it, and I don't think I've ever seen a single user-created level for it. The levels in this game don't have names like they do in Burning Rubber, but let's take a quick look at them. As you would expect, the first level is pretty easy, but watch out for the cops. Usually one cop on your tail is easy to get rid of, but don't let them pile up on you. Level 2 reminds me of level 10 from Burning Rubber, being a bridge level. Try to hit this jump at about the middle of the level for a ton of crates. It's a tricky one though, so if you can remember it's coming up, you're more likely to get the jump down. I'd hit the brakes right when you land. This third level is tricky as you're driving on what seems to be mud. Keep that in mind and don't take any really sharp turns. Keep an eye on the road signs so you don't hit a dead end. And watch out for the sharp turn at the end of the level. Level 4 should have been level 2. There's really nothing here that stands out as incredibly difficult, with the exception of narrow roads. If you've gotten this far, then this level should be a piece of cake. Level 5 is my favorite. You take control of a speedboat that can just really soar through the water. Watch out for the police boats here though, because they do shoot torpedoes at you. And they're not the easiest to dodge. Especially when they shoot at you point blank. Ride out this level knowing that reverse and braking are almost non-existent here. Always maneuver, not brake. Right off the bat in level 6, you've got to hit an incredibly difficult jump. Actually, most jumps on this level are incredibly hard to hit with no real payoff. If you can avoid them here, do it. The only other real dangers are the puddles of oil and the narrow roads. Thankfully, this level isn't very long. Level 7 reminds me of Winterland. It's an incredibly slippery level, which I'm not a fan of. To pass this level, you really can't drive very fast. It also seems like every time I'm here, I always, and I mean always, get the turbo engine. It never fails to result in death. <laughs> Level 8's a lot like the Rockies from Burning Rubber, which I didn't find all that difficult. Just keep in mind that you can't go off the road at all on this one, so treat it like it's a bridge level. Level 9. I think you can tell by the look of this level what it's supposed to be like. Military train sight. The cops here are in tanks, which are pretty slow moving. Be careful though, because they do shoot at you. The road's a little bit slick here, and watch out for the landmines. And finally, level 10. This is, to me, a really slow-paced level. I think it's just supposed to be difficult, but honestly, the only way it could be, would be if you're driving fast. And if you drive fast, I can tell you that you're gonna die. There's not very many other cars on this stage, and the ones that are there, or are supposed to be there, fall in the water, sometimes before they even get on screen. Just take your time here and only go fast when you've got to get over the jumps. There are countless things I love about this game, the graphics, the replayability, the simplicity of the controls, but I just can't get over the fact that this game is short and incredibly difficult. Now, that might not sound at all bad to a lot of people, but I wanted more from this game. I think it had a whole lot more potential than shown here, and it's just a damn shame there was never a Reckless Driving 2. Now, Jonas went on to create several other really awesome games, such as Redline for Ambrosia Software, Zebulon, a game similar to the classic game Nebulous, and nowadays works as a programmer for Unity a game development tool used in a lot of computer, iPhone, and web games today. Putting compatibility aside, I honestly think Reckless Driving could hold its own against the waves of crappy games being released in the Mac App Store today. Jonas isn't selling this game anymore though, and provides a free registration code for it on his website. FREE! Reckless Driving was a pretty popular shareware game back in its day with 150,000 downloads within its first two years of being released. Today, there's even a Facebook fan page for the game. In conclusion, I'm gonna say that if you've got one of these old iMacs, Reckless Driving is a game that shouldn't be missed. 